hear the ancestors calling Do you know who you are or where you come from? I hear your mama They say and yeah, know your roots Know your roots Know your roots Yeah, 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 yeah mama Welcome to the show, I'm Etienne. Now you may look at hats and think they are the same, but designs differ according to tribe. Now today we are looking at the way the Baganda constructed their hats, Obusisira, that they call home, the types of grass they used, among others, all for you to learn. Keep watching. Know your roots, know your roots, yeah. Uganda houses are circular in shape like you see this and they are built with mud that is applied on a wooden wattle of reed and thatching. Thick woven rings run around the entire roof and a straight pole is put in the middle of the house to support the heavy roof. African architecture uses a wide range of materials like grass for thatching, sticks of wood, mud, mud bricks, and rammed earth, stone, depending on the region. But for Buganda in particular, the unique thing about constructing the heart of Buganda is that it does not require digging of a foundation as long as the pole has been placed firmly. This is because its construction starts from the top downwards. Reeds are grass-like plants that grow in wetlands and are used for thatching. Elephant grass or napier grass not only increases soil fertility and protects arid land from soil erosion, it is also used for thatching huts here in Buganda after it has been dried. Grass thatching runs to the flow, therefore, it also acts as the wall of the house. For the case of the royal hut of the Buganda Kavaka, the rings inside his house are 52, which represents the 52 clans of Buganda. These were made by only males from the Ngeye clan, and these men were given certain privileges by the king, like exemption from taxes, plus they were allowed to help cross the wives of the Kavaka on the road, for instance. These were privileges because for a commoner called Omokopi, to even look at the wife of the Kabaka or stay close resulted to punishment by beating. The front porch of the Buganda hut is circular in shape and the thickness of the thatching is about 0.3 meters to make a waterproof roofing. The roof also widens downward so that in case of rain, the water does not slide off and enter into the hut. The entrance of the royal hut faces eastwards because the Baganda believe their ancestors came from the east. So the royal home facing its entrance to the east is a way of honoring their ancestors. However, for the commoners, the Bakopi, they pretty much can face the entrance of their huts in any direction. Initially, the floors in the huts were made of mud and bark cloth laid on top or mats. But these days, they are cemented. By 
by the way these huts are always cool inside you don't need air conditioning Okay, welcome to Generation 21st Views. We are get, uh, today we are getting views on what people think about huts. Do you think they should abolish huts and do cemented houses? Or, you know, we should continue our tradition of constructing huts. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And what's your name? John Anthony Ogema. Ogema. Yeah. Now, Ogema, uh, today we're looking at the way the Baganda constructed their huts. Okay. And, and it's a very beautiful design. <laughs> but people of late, the, when they talk about construction, they are talking about cemented houses, you know, or skyscrapers. Do you think that the, 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 the tradition should be continued of constructing huts or it should be dropped? I think that a wise man said, a people without a culture are easily persuaded. So even if we are advancing and we are going toward the West, but we should maintain our culture. Mm. And that our culture should always be there and it should be a way of a tourist attraction. So even if you are embracing the cemented and you are going west, we should not waste our culture. So that very traditional house, they should be encouraged. Mm. And there the, the, the always must be a way balance and a way forward that we have a balancing. Uh -huh. So uh, even if you are going west, we should not forget oh, our yes. traditional and our culture. It's cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I like him. So you're saying, in case you constructed a house, you know, yeah. a cemented house and all that, you still have a section on the side yeah. where you have a hut, eh? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so even it should be encouraged. Even if you're building west, but it should have that very hut. Mm. Why? Because our friends are coming from west. I have a lot of friends from the west. Mm. But when they come, the thing that propels them to come to Africa is our culture. Mm. That very hut. Mm. Yeah, and mostly they come and they enjoy the village more than even the city. Because if you are talking of city, mm. urbanization, they are more advanced they more than have, us. Yeah, so true. when they come, they come to see the real Africa. The real Africa. And Africa is a real deal. Oh, yeah. America, uh, Europe was the first world. They are done. The second world, America, it is done. Africa is the real world. And uh -huh. they are coming for us. So you should Did celebrate you us. Uh -huh. Africa is the real oh, world yeah. and they are coming for us and you should celebrate that. We yes. are the real deal. Oh yeah, know your roots, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Eh? I'm honored. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> yes, hello, how are you? I'm fine. Mm, what's your name? My name is Murungi Joab. Murungi Joab. So Murungi, um, what do you think about constructing huts? Do you think we, um, you know, people should abolish? Because today we are looking at the Baganda, the way they are constructing the huts. Do you think people should abolish constructing huts and just do cemented houses or they should continue the tradition? Well, I don't, I don't find it wise to abolish huts because one, they are so cold inside and two, with engineering, they are improved methods of construction. Huts are not bad. They are actually very good, they are cool inside and everyone would love to be in a hut. But the whole point is uh, with engineering inno innovation, there are so many ways you can modify a hut to make it a better place. So huts are okay and I don't find it wise to abolish them. Do you think um, the tradition of constructing huts should continue or we should abolish it in this generation? I think it should continue because it's uh, very beautiful. When you look at the way they build them and it, it keeps us, because most of people here, if you're actually in Uganda, you would like to see something like that because most of the kids have grown up not looking at those things. They know bangalows and, and flats. So if they built it somewhere else, it would be good for the new generation to look at what we had before. And I think they should continue doing it because, yeah. Know your root, know your root, yeah, yeah, yeah. 